So bevels can be a lot trickier than you realize when you first get into the 3D modeling. So for this one, what we're going to be doing, playing around with a shape that someone was working on and they were having a lot of trouble with it. Something like this. They're trying to add bevels to it to create kind of a uh, rounded corner here, if you would, where it bevels up here, down here. It stays flat on the side, but you get these rounded corners. Like the whole corner becomes rounded, basically. And so as you start to create more and more 3D models, you're going to quickly realize that there's many times that you have to do bevels in a specific order in order to get the results that you're looking for out of it. Now, in his case, and probably your case as well, what you might end up doing is like using hard ops, adding a bevel modifier. Uh, but what that's going to end up doing is beveling the whole thing. And if you hit C and clamp it, mouse wheel it up, you'll get something like this, right? And that's not what you want, right? If we do that again and maybe try changing the shape here to like 0.7, it comes out maybe a little bit different. Maybe you could use that, maybe not. But the uh, shape can actually come into play here as well. So keep that in mind. Now, in this case, that's not what we want to do. So we need to do two bevels. Basically, we do maybe this edge first and then we follow it up with these edges, right? That'll give us something like that. This one down here. Maybe we bevel these ones first, then we bevel this one. And what we'll see is that we actually have two different topologies now. So these ones kind of go and point towards the other edge, whereas these ones point towards the center of the face. Sometimes you want one or the other, believe it or not. You might use both of these at some point. So, but with that out of the way, I'll go ahead and change my colors real quick and then move it to the next one. Okay. All right. So just keep that in mind, bevel order. Next up, we can do different types of bevels as well. So if I add a loop cut real quick with Control R, we're gonna create some supporting edges to do a bevel. And so we select these faces like so, all the way around the back, you can hit I and inset to do something like this. Check edge rail if you want, okay. And next up, we can now come in here maybe and bevel this. Uh, but this edge and this edge, we can alt click, alt shift click, and we can bevel it, but we'll run into that kind of same issue. And so what we want to do is just maybe click and then um, change it to percentage. And the percentage bevel goes to the extents. So if we change it to 100%, it goes all the way out like so, okay? So I can merge that by distance and call it there, okay? Let's do that one more time real quick. And we'll do it. In the opposite order now so we'll do top bottom or top back and the bottom there inset loop cut we'll bevel here first oops sorry we did that one first last time bevel here first okay a m merge by distance we gotta you see like we can't grab through that area now so we gotta alt click alt shift click and bevel here You'll see we get a dramatically different result. Oh, I did not percentage bevel it, did I? I did not. Usually you hit M a few times, you can do that. Now we can do that. Okay. Not a dramatically different result now. Chain of model smooth. But we got an issue. See it? All right. So even this one doesn't work out fully. And so, like, why does this happen or what's occurring here? So, no matter how hard you try to fix this, you probably don't realize the answer to this one but when we did these bevels there's a slight like miscalculation between the uh, curvature and so when we look here it's a these are non-planar faces they're not flat so one of these vertices is slightly out right and that causes the shading issue because there's those triangles running from here all the way to there so the answer is just add more geometry it's unfortunate but that's the, uh, the solution on that particular case so but you can see with enough edges, that shading issue becomes so small, you can't really tell that it's occurring. But now the bevels just look a little bit goofy as well. So one of them things where the more you model, the more little interesting issues you find um, along the way anyways. So let's keep going with this though. There's tons and tons of things you can try, of course. I'm just gonna give you another example here real quick. What if we tried to bevel not this, but something like this, All right? 
Can we add a bevel to it? Could this work for you? Maybe, but the topology is pretty terrible. You wouldn't want corners like that, generally speaking, but if something you need, it's something you need, okay? Use it. So what about subdivision? All right, we're gonna add loop cuts real quick. And um, subdivision could work really well, believe it or not, for shapes like this. And uh, maybe a couple in here. Just demetrize it for now. I'm going to bring this down for a second. I want to do the middle different as well. Okay. Maybe we have two loop cuts. All right. So when we control three and subdivide it now. Okay. You can see for the most part, this one stays a little flatter. This one's going to round to the middle. Okay, so it's nothing real revolutionary here for you guys that have been practicing subdivision, but it's different, but that definitely interesting, I would say, right? It's one of those shapes that the more you play with, the more little interesting things you find out about it. So, so there's another one we can do, which is really fun. Uh, we're going to create a cube. We're going to do this manually, but you could, if you have machine tools, you can just use quad sphere. Um, but we're going to create a cube, go into edit mode, loop cut, loop cut, loop cut, right? Just like that. And now we're going to select all that and hit um, Alt Shift S and turn it into a sphere. All right. We're going to subdivide it one time. Apply. Alt Shift S again. Why not? Turns it into more of a sphere. We can use this as our basis for our shape here. So we can actually model off something like this as well. So if I Alt Z, X, delete those vertices, go to the side view here. So hold Alt while orbiting. X delete vertices. We now have this shape here. So you can see where this is possibly going to go. Like you can select edges, extrude them, right? Select edges, extrude them. Okay, maybe we shift those ones up a little. The only downside of doing it this way is like we see like the shape change here. It's slightly different, right? depending on the angle. So you got to move some of these vertices, perhaps. Um, and also, this does not turn flat on the side here, necessarily, right? Not that we can't turn it flat, but I'm just saying it's um it's not flat right now. So if we wanted to just, you know, maybe use vertex snapping, press E, X, hold control, we can do that. We can merge that one, M merge at last. A M merge by distance, there you go. So we can do something like that. It'll be slightly off. Like it won't be completely flat, right? But we want it flat. So this is where you have to kind of make judgment call, perhaps. Maybe you um, all A with machine tools, you can align to the left. Maybe you do something like that. That's a possibility. Um, maybe you try to just flatten these ones here. Maybe just align them to the right. We'll see it first. So you can try different things like this out, depending on the shape, right? Get different results out of it. We'll see what happens with that one. We grab this whole section, we'll click it, shoot it out. My origin's way over here, so I can symmetrize it. When you're in edit mode, you can move around, and the origin will stay in place. Subdivide, shade smooth, and uh, there we go. So sometimes subdivision might be the answer, right? It might be the easier or faster way of dealing with this. The only issue with this one is like, let's say we want to readjust that size there a little bit. We want it smaller or something. We can scale it, move it. But when we do that, this little section here may not be quite right or quite the way you want it. A lot of times you can, you can do like GG twice, go halfway and GG twice, go back halfway. You can do that to kind of flatten that area. And you can do that here a little bit as well to just flatten it or round it out a bit, right? So it should look pretty decent by the end of that. So I think this would probably be the best bet if you're trying to do subdivision, is working off a quad sphere, strangely, instead of doing a bevel necessarily. Um, that's not to say there's not other ways of doing this. There could be tons of different ways of creating a shape like this and tons of ways of working it out. So it's going to be up to you to determine, you know, what works best in your situation and uh, which methods you know also help.
determine which one you end up using. So, but in this case, for the most part, uh, we're doing these like so, anyways. All right, so that's all the different ways we can play with that one and bevel. Um, create the shape, practice with it. It's a lot of fun. Definitely different results. And um, yeah, it'll kind of set you up for modeling more complex things later on anyways. So hope you enjoyed the video and I'll check you out in the next one. All right, take care.